Hi, Lisa. Thanks for taking time to show me around. Absolutely. Thanks for coming, Dr. Rankin. And let me show you a little bit about um, the newly renovated space on the main floor here. So over here, you can see that we have four collaboration rooms. And these are only for students. We specifically designed that so students would have a place to collaborate, come in, hang out with team members on projects, hook up to a screen, have a quiet place to study. And these are open 24 hours a day and again, only available to students. Okay, and is that, are you staffed 24 seven or how do they get in? Yeah, so we're not staffed 24 seven, we're staffed until 9 p.m. at night. And then at that point, the front doors lock um, and students have 24 hour access with their, their key card, oh, okay. their student ID. Oh, great. Yeah, great. so it's a secure location for students to come in and hang out all night sure. long. Um, over here, I wanted to point out that we have the first and only mother's room on campus. And so we, it was very important for us to be able to support all students, including those that are parents. And so this mother's room is available for any mom, um, whether that's a, a faculty member, staff member, or student, again, 24 hours a day uh, to come and use as needed. Well, that's a great feature. I'm glad to see that in, in the Devereaux Library. Yes, absolutely. Um, you'll notice over here is our new ITS help desk and we moved this up from downstairs in the lower level of the library up here in the hub of student activity and so it's a very easy transition when students run into a snag or they're having any sort of issue for us to help them streamline where to go and when to get help. Okay, oh very good. Um, over here is our one of our really lovely conference rooms. Um, again, this is open to all students 24 hours a day. We also do let um, faculty and staff reserve the rooms on a limited basis. Students always get first priority though because we really wanted to make sure this was a very student-centric sure. building. Oh, that's great. And so you can see the students um, connect to the screens to work on homework. They use the whiteboards and they're in there collaborating all the time. Good. Great. And then over here is our hub, um, really of the library. It's, it's the information hub where students can come and ask questions. It's staffed until 9 p.m. at night. Um, and then that's sort of the entryway into our Vanderboom Office of Student Success, where we house all of our student success advisors, as well as career services. And this was very intentional. We wanted to make sure that we were providing students with holistic 360 support. Well, I can see this is going to be a very busy place during the academic year. It already is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Gerilyn, thank you for joining me today and talking to me about the renovations here at the Devereaux Library. I can see we're sitting in a coffee shop. When I was a student, this used to be a reference desk area and staff offices. Tell us about the renovation. It was, and um, if you'll notice, we have actual windows in this <laughs> library now. If you look around, we um, have lots of a natural light coming in, and we were able to do that on all the floors. When we first started the project, we didn't know that we were going to be able to open up the walls, and it's really made a big difference for the building and transformed it into a great place for students to come. Uh, we also had books all over um, the library, and that has been now put up on the top floor. And so we are um, able to still um, service the students and what they, their needs are for that too. A lot of that's gone electronic, so. Well, the windows are great. You can look out on the quad now while you're studying and it looks like a great place to congregate. I know that like you say, the lines at the coffee shop are long. I hear maybe we have to buy more chairs. We, we are looking at that, a little bit more furniture because everybody's enjoying using the space to study and, and uh, it's open 24 seven for the students to be able to use the space. Well, everybody I talk to that's come in here is just amazed by the transformation from what it used to look like to what it looks like now. I mean, the Devereaux Library is a hub that students just flock to. Yes, we're very happy with the results in the facilities area. The other thing we're very happy about is that we've been able to get the maintenance and repair done to the building that it's needed so, so greatly since um, being able to do the whole building at one time. Well, great job by you and your team to make it look so nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. And thanks to a large, generous donation from Steve and Julie Vanderboom, this was all made possible. My experience as a, as a freshman was a challenging one. I, I remember getting my grades after the first semester and thinking I'd never seen anything quite like that. Um, I hadn't uh, <laughs> had a, a GPA that started with a number two and I wasn't used to that. 
uh, coming as a, as a good student in a small high school in South Dakota. And the frustration that, that I had was uh, knowing that a, a lot of uh, my classmates weren't going to make it you know, past their first year. I certainly didn't want to be one of them, uh, but I, I felt at risk um, in some of the classes and you know, a, a calculus class in particular where I've, I, I just couldn't get the concept and I you know, read and studied and read and studied and I couldn't find a friend who could help me and uh, I just remember one night just throwing the book at the wall. Uh, fortunately, I missed the window. Uh, didn't do any damage, but uh, and there was a little bit of pleasure or relief. I think I broke the binding on the book, and that, that uh, made me feel better. Uh, but I, I think about that when when the school talked about the opportunity to support different things. I thought, you know, the Office of Student Success is something that that I certainly would have liked to have had uh, when I was uh, a freshman in college, and uh, and even after that. And so, very pleased, both Julie and I are very pleased that we could help uh, support this. I think the, the value to, in particular, to freshman students who are in a brand new environment and have new challenges uh, can find that support. And, and uh, of course, the school shared the, the numbers with, you know, last year, like 82% moving on. So that's a big, that's big progress from 67%. And, uh, very pleased to to be able to support a part of that. I wish it had been here when I was here. I love this space. I mean, I think it's fantastic. It's uh, uh, my hats off to the architect and designer who did the work, uh, who opened it up. Uh, you know, all the natural light, the you know the the colors are very attractive. The space is open. Uh, I just think it's a really comfortable place well designed uh, you know the collaboration rooms the access to to advisors the and the, just the buzz the activity out here is is fantastic uh, and I just toured and you know went up um, to the fourth floor and and down and and it's not just a lot of activity here it's activity on every floor and and it's not just a nice environment here it's a nice environment on each floor so I, I think the I think the school did a fantastic job uh, with with an old, dark library building and has created a space that, if I'm a student, I want to be here. It's great that we have donors like that that look out for our students and for the university. Absolutely. So let's go upstairs and I can show you some of the other um, services that we've rolled into the library to make everything very seamless. All right, after you. All right. And up here are some more services that we relocated in order to give students the continuity and centrality with a well, one-stop shop. So down this hallway, we have our testing center, which houses all of our accommodated testers, as well as does finals exams, midterms, and um, any student that needs to make up an exam. And what are the hours for testing? Yeah, so they're very similar to other academic services on campus at 7.30 to 4.30 um, with some special consideration given to common exam times um, and then of course midterms and finals which sometimes go later into the night. Sure. Uh, we also have our Office of Accessibility and Title IX which um, is very centrally located to the testing center in order to provide a lot of continuity for those students. Very good. Um, also down this hallway is our Office of Faculty Development and Advancement. And the reason that we wanted to house this service in a building that is otherwise very student-centered um, is because we think that that connection between faculty development and student success is very important. And so we're really excited to partner on a lot of different initiatives with them. And that office is a new office for the campus, and so it's great to have them in here so close to the students. So I, that, that's fantastic. Absolutely. And it also um, lends a lot of organic opportunities for students and faculty to meet together. Sure. Um, and then over here we have our tutoring services. And so students can pop up here at any of our uh, drop-in times during tutoring hours and get help with um, almost any subject on campus for freshmen, sophomore, and even some upper level courses. 
And are your tutors peer tutors or are they staff tutors? Yeah, they're peer tutors. Okay. They're um, student leaders that have mm -hmm. developed um, an excellence in the subject that they tutor in and are recommended by department heads. Oh wow, very good. Yeah, and we're gonna walk over to our maker space, which is a really exciting new initiative on campus. And a maker space is a place where students can develop their sense of entrepreneurship and tinkering. And so the idea behind this is that students will be able to come in and have a very low stakes way of using a 3D printer or a Glowforge or a plotter printer. And then they can uh, transition to other spaces like camp. Um, well, engineering is so much hands-on that this is great. It gives you a chance to uh, experiment and try different things. So really a very nice area in here. Absolutely. And we're also really excited to expand this space into another opportunity for outreach in the K-12 community here um, and helping to get uh, young engineers interested early on. So I'm going to hand it over to Trinity, our lead student worker, and he's going to talk a little bit about some of the projects we're working on. Hey Trinity, thanks nice for taking you. time to uh, show me around here. Uh, no problem, uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, today I'll be showing you around the makerspace. Um, as of right now, we have some nice 3D printers that we just got in, brand new out of the box. Um, they run just about 24 seven with student projects. Wow. Uh, they're free to use. Right now all we have is students sending in emails about what they want printed, whether it's parts, whether it's just fun stuff they want. We've had a bunch of lightsabers printed for everything. Do you have to come in to print them here? Can you actually do it online remotely? Um, we like to just come in so that we can monitor them, just may okay. see if they fail right away. That's usually when they fail. Sure. Um, anything else is, we, we have just students email us about okay. what they want printed. So okay. we're trying, we're looking into actually getting it so students can start their own prints. So that's coming here hopefully next semester or next year at the latest. Oh, that'd be outstanding. So uh, other things we have in here, we have our uh, laser cutter Glowforge, which operates not quite as much, but it, it's a handy tool. It's actually my favorite machine on campus personally. Um, well, you, you'll have to explain to me what that does. So what it does, so here's a nice example right here. So this is just a standard piece of acrylic we could get off of Glowforge. And what we did is we can upload a PDF into the Glowforge website and then it'll map out what the Glowforge needs to do, how much power it needs to put into it in order to get something like this. So this was actually made in PowerPoint and we exported it as a PDF, uploaded it, and then it just went through and made our little schedule that we have. Um, other things we have, we have grubby sitting in the window on blue acrylic. We have a hundred dollar grubby or yeah, just a hundred dollar grubby bill sitting over okay. there. And then we've had other things. We just had somebody come in with uh, plywood to test a chessboard and just to see how much power they need on that and all that. So we can engrave, we can cut, and that ranges anywhere from acrylic to plywood to leather. And we can even engrave aluminum and steel if we really need to. So. Well, before we get, I saw it in the corner of my eye, you've got a box of Legos. Oh yeah, here. we have a bunch of Legos over what, here. What's with the Legos? So, when I came in here to meet with Lisa, first thing that popped in my mind with engineers and makerspaces, we need Legos. Just, just because we're engineers and most of us grew up on Legos or something like that, and that's pretty much where everything kicked off. So I figured why not just have a bunch of Legos in here kind of as a de-stressor or if they really, really want to or very rapid prototyping type of thing um, since that's one of the big elements of engineering and one of the big things that we're actually taught out here. Good idea. Um, moving forward, we have our dot plotter, which we print posters sizing from the 17 inch by 22 inch all the way up to like 44 inches wide and six feet long if you really want to. Right. So we actually had Lisa print a life size image of one of her coworkers for her birthday to surprise her with. And I was kind of humorous just because <laughs> it was, in fact, it was actually bigger than the person that it was printed for. So uh, this is also free to use for students. You send okay. us in PDF, uh, PDF or PowerPoint and we'll get it printed for you. Um, we're currently out of gloss because everybody loves the gloss, but we sure. we have a shipment of that coming in, okay. hopefully soon. So, moving on, we got our um, kind of lean set of tools at the moment. We're working on getting more, 
just as time goes on and we see what students need for different projects and stuff. Um, and then we have our sewing equipment and our sewing machine and support equipment. Um, we've had some of the clubs on campus use it for just costume making. I know the medieval fighting club has come in here just to make some of their costumes and some of their padding stuff too. And it's all free to use. Um, we have some, some like zippers and uh, clips and stuff just for people to use if they need it. Um, what are your hours? Uh, we're open, our official hours are 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day of the week. Okay. Um, usually the general rule of thumb is if one of the employees is in here, it's okay to be in here. So we could be open much later than 9 p.m. if somebody's in here working on homework or a project themselves. So. Sure. Okay. Um, we have cubbies over here just for free to use for students. Uh, first come, first serve. So they come in, they grab a key, put their stuff in the cubby, they can lock it up and take off if they need to. Um, otherwise, we don't charge anything for it, like always. Um, it's a completely free space, to be quite honest with you, which I'm not sure how rare that is for colleges, but it, it, it's, I think it's a great opportunity for us, just because students don't have to worry about spending the money that they're saving up or whatnot. So, um, but no, that's most of what we can do here in the makerspace as of right now. We're looking on growing, just like I said, to support any project students want to do. Um, what, uh, look, I mean, you've obviously got quite a few students in here studying and working on projects, and is there a time when you find it's the most busy? Uh, most Thursdays, we usually have the solid mechanics group come in here and study, or, or that, or before an exam, we usually get a big group of people just in here talking over the whiteboards and stuff yeah. on what's right and what's wrong. And I haven't seen a shouting match yet, but I have experienced one in other places before. We can get... Trinity, thank you very much. Thanks it's for visiting. And this is one of my favorite areas in the building because it is just all windows. And I think that it's also students' favorite area on campus. Um, they really like to gravitate towards this space. It's a little bit quieter. They can study. They can pull up a chair right next to the window and look out over the quad. So, um, Well, if you were a, a student or a faculty staff before we renovated, you will remember just the little windows that we used to have here that didn't let much light in. So this really is a, a remarkable change. It is a remarkable change, and, and it's, it's gone from um, yeah, very little sunlight to one of the most light-filled places on campus. Definitely. So here is another really interesting initiative, and this is called the Slide Rule Math Help Center. Um, this is a center that helps students with that really crucial foundational element, which we all know is math. Um, and so this center provides students with additional support services, um, allows them a place to uh, get help with, with specific problems, work in groups, or just ask a faculty member a question that they have. So I'm going to walk in here and, and introduce you to Dr. Kowalski, uh, the department head of math, and he'll talk a little bit about what else they do in here. So this is the, the slide rule. Um, it's our drop-in math tutoring center. And what, we, what this place is, is it's a, a spot for hard rockers in any math class to kind of come in here and get help on their schedule. So they don't have to wait for an office hour or they don't necessarily have to be the first person to talk to that prof. They can come in here and it's a place where students um, study hall, they just work. Um, we have tutors who come and help out. Specifically, it's a drop-in center for any of the students who are in pre-calculus, trigonometry, calc one and calc two. Um, and so that's kind of what we have tutors who are trained to go and help. At any given hour of the day, we actually have two undergraduate tutors. Um, we can see a couple of them floating around here. Owen and Emily happen to be in here right now. And we always have a faculty member who's in here as well. So um, it gives students a chance to talk to professors, to talk to other students, to see how these pieces of the puzzle fit. Um, the space is kind of modular, so every, every couple of days it kind of reassembles into different groups of people. Um, they have a group back there who's doing advanced calc. We have a group over here who's doing calc one. And tomorrow it'll be a completely different set of folks who are learning different kinds of things. The schedule varies, so it gives students a chance to, to find instructors, to find tutors who kind of fit their learning styles as well. 
And that's kind of the point of this place. Do the tutors come on a normal schedule so that you know if I show up at 10 o'clock on Thursday, I'm going to have a certain tutor? They do. In fact, we have it posted on the school's website. Okay. It's posted right over there. So that way we want to make sure that, that students have a lot of flexibility in who's here, but also enough regularity that they can kind of budget their time appropriately. And are faculty assigned to work here, or is this voluntary? How does that work? So our faculty go and they contribute um, at least one of their office hours okay. every, every semester. And so it's a voluntary effort on all of the side of the math department. Um, part of the, the reason why we do that, why our faculty go and do that, is we want students to get past the hurdle of asking for help. Sure. And so having faculty here who aren't your faculty you don't have to be the student who looks like they don't know what's going on. You can talk to somebody, get help, figure out that the faculty are not scary people, <laughs> and then maybe work your way up to talking to yours. Okay. So the goal is to destigmatize that asking of help, to go and make that a part of what hard workers do, that we, we ask for help, we work together to solve problems, and our tutors are other hard rockers. So once you start to master it, you come back and help other people solve those problems. So you've been in this space for almost a full semester now. Mm -hmm. uh, is it been successful? It's been busy, <laughs> is what it's been. Um, uh, as we've been tracking around here, we tend to average about um, 10 to 15 students in this space every hour that it's wow. open. And it's open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6 p.m. Um, we've got students from uh, trigonometry, calc one, calc two, pre-calculus, they make the big bulk. But we've also sort of noticed that we have students who group together when certain professors are in here so they can get help on specific topics. Um, and so it's kind of uh, uh, pulls in, into little bits of like we'll have um, uh, uh, real analysis days on Thursdays or we'll have a linear algebra days on Tuesdays because students know that those are when certain faculty are. We've even actually carved out specific times um, during the week that are set aside specifically for um, core classes. So there's a two hour block that's just centric to, central to Calc 2. Students who have any Calc 2 class, they can come in and they get help and all of the tutors are focused on that one topic so that students kind of can, can see what other classes are doing, they get a sense of what's going on. All right, now the most important question I have is, how did you pick the name Slide Rule? So it's named after those things right there. Um, uh, we have two instructor slide rules up there. Essentially, slide rules were the engineering tool of, of the 60s and so. And they were the precursor to the cal calculator. They were the pre precursor to uh, computers. But you had to know how to use them. They didn't just give an answer. And so what we wanted is we wanted a name that tied partly to the sort of ubiquitous tool of engineering, but also to tie to the idea that that you don't push a button and have something happen. You have to put in some of the effort. So slide rules were educational tools that required a little bit of effort on your part. And so we decided to kind of honor the long legacy of the engineering discipline and also tie it together with what we do now, the modern discipline, and having to put a little bit of effort to get that help out. Well, this is a great space and a great concept. Oh, thank you. gorgeous. It's <laughs> wonderful. And, and we're hoping, hoping to see a lot of great things come out of it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're on the top floor of the library. This is the library proper, where all of the stacks of books are, as you can see. All of the librarians are housed up here. And this is a space where students can access library services. And also, as you can see, study in a really quiet space. Um, and so, of course, it looks very similar to what it looked like before. Um, except with the addition of all of the beautiful windows, which is uh, makes for a very aesthetically pleasing study space for students. Very nice touch. It, it looks like it's, it's great to see students up here studying and it looks like this is more individual study versus the team study we saw downstairs. Yes, yeah, that's actually a really good description where yeah. downstairs is more team-based, um, the, the third floor is more help-based, um, collaborative, and then up here is more individual study. Very good. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to give me a tour of the Devereux Library. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. This is fantastic. What a great renovation. So it just with all the students in here, it's just fantastic to see that. And the windows, 
who would have thought this building could have windows? <laughs> and you know, the donors like uh, Steve and Julie Vanderboom to help out with student success, and the Devereaux family, the Devereaux Library. And we still have industrial engineering in the garden level, one floor down. And so we've expanded their space a little bit, I understand, as we've moved IT up in this level. So this is really is a fantastic building and has really turned out to be a hub for students. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you for coming. And, and I know that this has really just changed the whole vibe on campus. And I see students studying together, collaborating, and just interacting with each other more. So Very we're good. really happy for this space. Great, thank you. Thank you.